Hey, yes. Regulator cleaning brush. No, I'm kidding. This is not what we use for cleaning. Well, you could you could you, I guess. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about cleaning your regulator today. Some of you have been asking. This is Alec Pierce from Scuba Tech Tips. And um, some of you have been asking about ultrasonic cleaning. Uh, and, and ultrasonic cleaning is one of the preferred methods for cleaning regulator parts. Let me explain a few things, though. If you're, when you bring your regulator into a service center for cleaning, for service, if it's a complete service, if it requires a complete service because of time or the number of dives or the condition of the rig or there's a problem, whatever reason, then generally speaking, ultrasonic cleaning may or may not be part of that, okay? Because the, the, the first thing the technician will do is, is, is try the regulator. He'll actually put it under pressure and try it to see if he can get some idea of what characteristics it's displaying before service, okay? And he makes a note of that. So what he'll do is he'll he'll completely disassemble, after he's checked it, he'll completely disassemble them. Every part and piece comes apart. And then he'll inspect every part and piece, everything. He inspects everything. As he's doing that, he will set aside the parts that either are going to be replaced from the factory supplied service kit and the parts that need to be cleaned. So there's going to be two piles of parts. The ones he's going to replace, he'll put, and, and actually those parts should be, if it's a good dive store, should be kept in a bag so that you, the owner of the regulator, will get back all those parts he's going to replace. And, and then all the parts that need to be cleaned. Everything else will be inspected, cleaned if necessary, and set to one site. All right, so now he needs to clean the parts that are not going to be replaced but need to be cleaned. Those, there aren't very many. There aren't very many. Unless the regulator was, was, was abused, wasn't rinsed, wasn't cleaned, and has a lot of corrosion on it, there aren't that many parts that actually need to be cleaned. Um, maybe the yoke screw a little bit, parts of the body and so on, but there aren't that many parts. The parts that need to be replaced, essentially that does it if they're actually So anyway, so what he'll do then is he'll take those parts and clean them. Why ultrasonic cleaning? Well, a big brush isn't going to do it. Some of the parts are very, very small. Here's a tiny part right here. You can see a little, a little C clip here, and, and, and that has to be cleaned. Sometimes these are replaced if they're badly corroded, but sometimes they're not. Other bits and pieces and parts are very small. So they're, they're, you can't just use a brush. Soaking them and so on isn't going to work. The ultrasonic cleaner is the preferred method, certainly for small parts. And the reason is very simple. Ultrasonic cleaning by its very nature will clean small parts. The ultrasonic action will get inside those small parts, places that you can't even see. It gets inside there. And using ultrasonic bubbles, it actually pounds the heck out of that part, loosens up any dirt and corrosion, and cleans it away. Ultrasonic is very simply, it really is just an, uh, uh, an oscillator built into a tank so that <clears throat> whatever you put into the tank, when you turn on the oscillator, it shakes and produces bubbles. It's not unlike an ultrasonic medical procedure. It produces bubbles, microscopic bubbles, from the vibration of the water. And so the physical action of the vibration and the menu bubbles that open and close and so on, it all just disturbs, gets inside and cleans everything. That's really all it is. So this is what an ultrasonic cleaner looks like. And what, what the diastore operator then will do, he will fill the, uh, fill the ultrasonic cleaner with the appropriate fluid. And that fluid, just to answer some of your questions so you don't ask me in your comments, which I don't mind, but it comes up. People will say, what do you, what do you put in? Well, some people just use water. It really depends on what you're cleaning. You see, these cleaners are not just used for scuba. Trust me, they're used by jewelers and they're used by scientists and all, all different types of industries where they have small parts in particular that need to be cleaned carefully without damaging the part. And it'll depend on the industry and what you're cleaning as to what you use in the ultrasonic cleaner. In the scuba industry, you really have two choices. One is, <clears throat> is a concoction. I'm going to call it a concoction <laughs> that is recommended by the manufacturer. That concoction usually comprises some form of a, a detergent. It could be um, a, a very common one is simple green. A tiny amount of simple green in water is a common uh, recommended cleaner. Uh, others use Dawn dish soap. And then as well, they may recommend that you mix that with some vinegar. Vinegar is a touch of acid, acetylsalicylic acid. Say that three times. And, uh, and uh, a little bit of that as well would help to clean, specifically clean the corrosion. And that corrosion could be co corrosion from, from salt water. It could be growth. It could be marine growth, almost like a coral, seawater deposits and so on. So the correct concoction w is designed to attack those deposits. You can also, the second option is to purchase a special ultrasonic cleaner 
cleaner. <laughs> Ultrasound and cleaner. You buy it in a jar and using the correct amount and it's in the correct amount of water you put it in. And that that specially prepared chemical ultrasound and cleaner is is specifically designed for cleaning scuba parts. Really just that simple. So what do you do? Well, you take the screen, the stainless steel screen. You can't just drop the part in. This is a stainless steel bin here. You can't just drop the part in. So it's sitting on the bottom. It has to be suspended. If it's sitting on the bottom of this pan, then it is cushioned a little bit. So the ultrasonic, the vibrations and the bubbles won't get into it. So you use a screen like this. You see, it's a stainless steel screen. And you simply put the part into the screen. So I have here, this is not a good example, but I have here uh, a, a pretty greasy looking um, filter. And uh, you see it's pretty green, it down, yeah, yeah, pretty green looking. So it has some, some copper deposit on it as well. From the salt water, that's usually salt water that causes that. Uh, these sintered filters have copper in them, so the salt has reacted. And we don't clean filters, we replace them. But I think, I think that I can show you how this works. So there's a, 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 a small item that we will put in there. Now, the other thing is that this sintered filter is actually a, a, an interesting a piece of equipment. It's a very scientific or very sophisticated uh, arrangement where there are millions of tiny, tiny balls and they are glued together or fastened together in, in the correct shape and there's a gap between the balls so as you breathe air in from the tank the air has to go around those gaps to get through and every time it turns dirt comes off. The air turns, but the dirt doesn't. It keeps going straight until eventually this is jammed up with dirt that got, got stuck. Read about sintered, S-I-N-T-E-R-E-D, sintered filters, you know what I mean. So you take the sinter filter and you drop it into the stainless steel uh, a basket that's in there and you cover this up. And you may have preheated this you can actually heat uh, some of the better ultrasonic cleaners. You can preheat the material which helps a little bit. Not necessary, but it is helpful if you're trying to do, dissolve salt and other corrosion. You heat it up, then you just turn it on. And you can turn this on. Can you hear that, Kevin? Yeah. You can turn this on, and there's a timer. It doesn't take very long in most cases, depending on the corrosion and the material. You can turn it on for anywhere from two minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes. Anything more than 15 minutes is quite a long time. And you do have to be careful because if you are cleaning a part of the regulator that's going to be reused, you, it actually, you can actually take some of the finish off. I've seen some, some of my store staff, unfortunately, years ago, put in a nice dirty, but a nice chrome piece that they want to clean, that they're going to reuse, and they put the cr nice chrome piece in, and they leave it too long, and they pull it out, it's all brass. <laughs> the chrome was removed. Uh, so you, got, you have to choose the right length of time in order to do that. Now. There's another minor problem. That screen has got about one quarter inch uh, holes in it. So if you have something very, very small, something very, very small, then what you need to do is get a, a little plastic dish like this, a little plastic cup like this, punch a whole bunch of holes in it, not too big. Then you get small parts like little tiny washers or, or nuts or bolts, or in this case, I'm just have this little this little clip. I don't know if you can zoom in on this clip. Can you do, zoom in that? No? It's just it's just grungy. And so you put that inside of that. And then you see once again, this allows you to put this into the into the uh, basket. And there we go. It sinks. So now that small item is suspended in the in the liquid, the ultrasonic liquid, and in the basket. And so it will be clean, but you won't lose it. It's pretty easy to lose things down inside the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to turn this off. It's going on. It's almost finished. And there we go. Turn up. Now what you do, open it up carefully. And now you really don't want to get ultrasonic fluid on your hands. So now what you can do, you take this out, put it into a dish like this. And now, just a second, Kevin, you take it and you rinse it. Rinse it off. I'm going to go over here and give it a quick rinse. There we go. That's like that. And bring it back over here. And let's see what we have. Let's see if we made any difference at all. Well, there's that little filter, which was all green. <laughs> And it's much cleaner. It's not perfect yet, but it's much, much cleaner. You can see that a lot of the green is gone. <clears throat> Again, we would not normally clean a filter anyway. I did a great job on that little C-clip. That's actually the C-clip that holds, holds the filter in place. So you can see it does a great job. Rinse it off thoroughly, dry it. So now the, uh, your, your dive store service man, he has your whole regular spread out. He has all the major parts clean, ready to be reassembled. He has all your used parts. 
that are going to be replaced with a service kit in a bag gone and he has the new service kit here and he's all ready to go he just puts the whole thing back together all new parts from the service kit any clean parts that he need to replace puts it all back together and starts this adjustment and testing procedure that's really very simple. I know some of you are asking about this. That's why I wanted to do this short video on using the, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, hope that was helpful and interesting. And you can ask your local dial store what they do, how they clean their stuff as well. Maybe he'll let you look at it. All right. Any questions, comments, keep them coming. Thanks very much. Alec Pierce Scuba, Tech Tips.